So we're going to wait till 11. We've got another minute or two because this is a topic that so many people um, have asked um, for help on. And we have so many options um, that I want to show you and I want to demonstrate for you. And I'm going to ask everybody um, to, if you're serious about your paper, hang in with us until we get through um, today's podcast material, um, unless it's an absolute emergency, because one step builds on the other. Okay, so it is great to see everybody today. Thanks for uh, participating. Um, and today we're going to focus on the many, not just one or two, many various options for paper storage and retrieval. Um, all of them have their pros and cons. All of them are reasonably easy and accessible, and but all do require even just a minimal um, amount of uh, special tools and resources. Some can be carried out on, on the go, on the fly, and with limited extra time commitment. My goal today with you is to outline options that go beyond the traditional filing cabinet, all right? Filing cabinet is almost a last stage solution for you. So uh, it has its place, but it is not the first place to start or aim for. I want to help you to find the one system to start with that gets you started, that gives you hope and gives you effectiveness and positive feedback for success, all right, that keeps you going, that helps you undermine the overwhelmed that all of you are expressing to me about managing your papers. I also want it to help you find how to eliminate those piles of papers, not to mention what goes along with them. And that's the feeling of chaos and frustration, lots of nods there. When you can't find the one paper that right now you desperately need and you know is somewhere in that pile, all right? So hopefully each and every one of you today get a little hope, get a few ideas and are not so overwhelmed that you can't acknowledge to yourself one of the systems today, one of the strategies as potentially useful to you. Okay, and then move on to actually try it and then start getting the relief that that stage one, start with stage one. I've broken it down into stages, all right? Each of these systems kind of build on each other and it's like going from grade one to grade two to grade three to high school to whatever. Let's not start out in the university, all right? And you get the relief from its effectiveness. Especially important though, is adopting a system that fits with you as you are today and helps you keep going, helps you identify those keeps. We talked about priority papers in the last uh, few podcasts and Braden really, really pushed. And I think he's got them all posted now. So you can go back and review that. Identify what your key papers are once they're sorted. And then the, one of these systems, all right, starting today, will help you keep them accessible because the bottom line here is they need to be accessible. It can't be the perfect system, but it's so much work that you're caught midstream putting it into effect okay that's no use when you're starting it why is it important because some of the papers let's let's admit the truth here all right papers are complicated and some of the papers will remain potentially useful some of the papers will absolutely remain definitely useful figuring out which is which is going to be the, the job at hand now 
I do have to tell you, like everything else, there is no ideal system, all right? So we're looking for each and every one of you to pick the elements that you know, you know, I could do that. I could start there, all right? Because each of them will get your papers organized into at least three to four priorities. That's a big step forward. All right. And it is doable. All right. All of them, though, every single one of them. Well, getting out of bed this morning took effort, right? And planning. All right. So I'm making it to the podcast today took effort and planning. So all of them require some dedication, some commitment, not a huge amount, but you have to keep it up here on your best day, on your worst day. What can you do? Don't be telling yourself what you can't do, because even in the midst of what you feel you can't do, there is some tiny thing that you remain able to do that you can do. It also requires some, some of them not a lot, certainly not like a filing cabinet, okay, trying to maintain a filing cabinet, some reasonable amount of time, energy, and effort. In, in the different stages. If you're just starting out, you're gonna to need to set it up. You're going to need one or two of them will require that you get a few additional resources, not expensive things. There's always a cheaper way to do it, all right? And then once you start, you wanna maintain it, right? You wanna maintain it without it being a full-time job. That's what I'm thinking. So that's what we're trying to do today. What are you going to get in the end? What is the, the payoff here? The payoff is that you'll have far less stress, far less stress, all right? And that frantic, you can, you can let go of that frantic search for documents when you need it. And I guarantee you, the simplest and the most difficult today, and there aren't too many difficult, we will talk a little bit about filing cabinets, that's probably about as hard as, and difficult as we get. Each of them is so much healthier for your blood pressure and mental health, all right? Yeah, okay, so Hafs is going to take over the computer operation and I'm gonna demonstrate. So what are the best and easiest options for storage? I have divided them into a few steps. Step one, stage one. I've got three here. All right. Three here. Bring my other little useful one here. You may need up to five. All right. So you're definitely going to need three. All right. So these are four. Priority one, priority, I've got them in the right order, priority two, priority three. But remember we said last week and the week before, the first box that is not um, identified really is that box where you pick up a big pile of whatever paper is lying around and that's your work box. You put those papers however you find them, off the floor, off the uh, flat surfaces, in that box, and that's your work box. Don't go to that. Okay, and the next box, remember we said there has to be some discrete place for your mail as it comes in, because almost certainly whatever mail is coming in, not all of it, but a good deal of it is going to be what you need to deal with first. I, I, in today's session, I don't talk about, depending on how overwhelmed you are, I don't talk about necessarily having to open the mail, but I really encourage you, no matter how overwhelmed you are, open the mail, all right? Because even if it's bad news, you are far better off knowing the bad news than having it come back on you later. If you ignore bad news, it is only going to be a bigger bad by the time you have to deal with it. 
All right, so take a deep breath. Okay, priority one, priority two, priority three. So priority one would be your identity and legal papers. Remember we said when you're triaging that, that start box, that work box, from the papers you pick up off the flat surfaces in the floor, you're looking for financial papers, you are looking for legal papers. All right, priority two, we'll talk about in a few minutes. Now, where would you put priority one if you don't use clear totes? These are really portable, they're, they're user-friendly. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the pros and cons in a minute. Okay. All right. Now, here's where I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools in the whole world. All right. This is a rolling tiered set of baskets. It comes cheap. All right. You can get it at Canadian at a, at a, um, a hardware store. If you're in Canada, Canadian Tire. Um, I think everybody's carrying them now. Michael's, an organizing store. You can probably get them at Walmart, Costco. All right. I've got them at various places. And what I do, can I see that there? Okay. You don't, oh, oh. no, I'm fine. I got it. I got it. Okay. So you don't even need to label them. It's pretty obvious that the top basket is. This, this thing is very, very, very important and has a short deadline, really short deadline, all right? The second basket is, it is important, but you know what? I've got a little, I've got a little reasonable time. The third basket is, I need to attend to this, but um, when it becomes a higher priority, that's when it'll move up the basket, all right? Now, the other type is, and these are great. I have about five of these. All right, now, also a rolling, I got this at Staples, but you could probably get it on Amazon or anywhere else, um, a rolling hanging basket. It's got wheels, it's got a little uh, shelf on the bottom, and you can use legal. You see this way is legal. This way is letter size, hanging files. What suits you best? And each of these files can be tabbed with whatever makes sense to you. It's infinitely adaptable to what your needs are. All right, okay, and the next one. Okay, so those are all stage one, all right? Stage two. I want you to see over here um, my binder system. All right, so I have, just to show you, I've got different sizes of binders. For the visual clutter, honestly, if you're going to adopt this system, I strongly suggest that with very few exceptions, you keep them a, um, a homogeneous color just to cut down on the visual clutter. Unless there's something that is really, really important to you, choose a binder of a different color. Bills, for instance. Um, so uh, we've got Psychology Today blog. We've got Conquer the Clutter book proposal. We've got Conquer the Clutter podcast. We've got a section here on materials, on resource materials. I've got a section here on comorbidities, anxiety, abuse, um, narcissism, procrastination. These, I'm not pushing and I get nothing for it, but I find these the two level one really because now I get a whole lot of flat surface that I can also organize and work from, all right? And you never have enough flat surfaces. So you can have binders that are up to four inches. Now, where is the one here that I had for? Um, of course, perfect system, right? 
We're already stymied. Okay. Um, one of the binders, when I find it, is going to be um, about household. Um, so you have uh, file folders that have pockets. Is this in here? Yeah, this is it. You have stuff. Okay. So let me show you. These tools are cheap. All right. They're cheap. They're portable. They're useful. This is stage two when you move if you choose a binder. What's good about a binder? It's infinitely portable, all right? And it's, and it's infinitely accessible, all right? So for instance, one of the ways, these, this use of a binder, for instance, is about PR bookings and, and sheet, um, sheets from um, a PR firm when we had the release of the book. Can you hold that for a second, please? And so it's just three hole punched the documents themselves, the papers uh, that I want to keep for contact information. What use would you have for some of the papers that you want, are going to want to keep that don't need any special treatment? That's all you need is a half decent three hole punch and cheap binders. All right, and they're there. Now don't three hole punch everything like we talked about before. Set your criteria ahead of time. What is important? What is the common theme? Maybe it's in this case, for instance, contact numbers for household services. All right. Do you have to three hole punch every paper? Well, I did in that one because it worked for me. But in this one, I don't wanna be three hole punching every time something comes in. So I got, I got cheap, heavy paper, pocketed, double pocketed folders, cheap, cheap, cheap. And they can be reused. They can be relabeled. All right, and I used, so maybe in this one, for instance, contact numbers for household service providers, I don't want to have to look up. Maybe I don't want to have to put it in my phone um, every time uh, he changes his number or she changes her number. So if you have children, and especially important, school office number, the name of the secretary, so she thinks you're her friend. Plumber, all right, electrician dog walker if you have one, house cleaners if you have one, snow removal, the vet, your doctor, dentist, any numbers that you wanna keep at hand, your favorite takeout, put them in there, all right, okay. You can also at the same time use the same binder. It's all about living, it's all about household, your bills when they come in. Now, I wouldn't keep bills forever, all right, but I would probably keep bills unless you run a business and you can claim the expenses. If you can, the year at the top, 2022, heat. Otherwise, keep the last bill that you paid, all right? And when the new bill comes in, you don't have to have some fancy dancy. All you have to do is take this one out, put the other one in, and you don't even have to three hole punch it. This is infinitely adaptable on an ongoing basis. If you need the information, if you don't need the information, if you are satisfied to go back into your banking information online, and I have to say all of these systems are usable and adaptable to online. You don't need to keep the paper. If you're keeping the paper, it's because it's giving you confidence and reassurance, all right? That's the only reason to keep the paper because if you bank online, you can go into your bank account online. You can get the same information and all you have to do is sit at your computer. There is no filing. So maybe you use this system until you can get yourself to a comfort level where you can see, you know what, when was the last time they actually asked me for that bill? 
really, what purpose is there in keeping it? If I need it, I can print it out. If you don't have a printer and you don't, you're not online, the bank can give it to you. Probably for less money than the binders and the folders. All right, for the few times you're actually going to need it. Hydro. All right, internet. Usernames and passwords. This is a big one. I don't know. I don't know how good your memory is, but usernames and passwords. All right, access codes. All right, you ever have one of those moments where you're trying to you're trying to input the passcode uh, for the access code or the passcode for your security system before it goes off and you're having a foggy day. All right, home security, safety deposit box. You could even put the keys in there. All right, all right. Here's another type of binder. Now those are pocketed binders. I don't think I'd start off with them though. They are heavier duty. So if they're gonna be around for a while, all right, they are pocketed. You can use the pocket. It's a higher outlay for these. They're not terribly expensive. They're, they're plastic or whatever that material actually is. Um, I like to convince myself it's all the plastic that we recycled. Um, you can use the pockets or you can three hole punch them and keep them more as um, notes. All right, so these are a little more adaptable, a little more expensive, but they last a lot longer. So maybe you use these for longer term um, things. All right. Now, for another type, all right? So you wanna figure out what to do. We're gonna talk about time management, all right? But when you find a paper, and it is a priority one, it has to be handled this week. You've got your stack of, small stack of priority ones. If it is not possible or too overwhelming, you're so, you're not having a great day, or a great week, pick this kind of, you don't need a labeler, um, right? I like the labeler, it's neat, but you don't need a labeler. You can use a marker and mark the date, mark the day of the week, all right? Again, pocketed. What am I going to do on Monday? What do I have to do on Monday? What do I have to do on Tuesday? Just take everything that is yelling at you and nagging you that you need to get done and break it up into the day of the week that you're going to do it so it doesn't sit on your shoulders, exhausting you and overwhelming you. All right, just stick it in there and save it falling around. Don't forget these handy little clips. I love these clips. They come in all sizes. All right, they have saved many, many messes. All right, all right. So, um, the other things that you can do if you have information. Um, I particularly, I would really strongly suggest this tier three um, basket system. It'll go with you everywhere. It'll go with you to the kitchen table. It'll go with you to the bedroom. It'll go with you if you have a place to sit where your computer is. It'll go with you while you're watching television. Um, all right. Very, very handy. And the material that's in it is safe. But if you were to choose one of the others, know that you can get color coded. If you have ADD or ADHD, externalizing or some kind of cognitive um, interference, all right, uh, depression, anxiety, externalizing the responsibility for getting the thing done 
is really, re and, and recording it is really, really important, really, really effective, and especially important, all right, especially useful is color coding. I use color coding. I don't have ADD or ADHD, but it is so helpful just to grasp information at a glance. Um, I use it on my Google Calendar. If it's my responsibility, it's a red dot. If it's half six, it's peacock. If it's Steve's, it's deep blue. If it's availability, it's green. If the person can't keep their appointment, it's orange. Um, and you know what? I look and I go, okay, I've got four or five things today. All right. These are also, um, I color code, I chose the colors by this is going to be a real problem if I don't attend to it. This is like top priority. Have to look, I personally have to look at this every day. The yellow is like the traffic lights. All right. It's like, yeah, okay, a little caution. It's the next thing. It's not um, really, really onerous, but it's the next thing I have to. And then I have a green one for when I get around to it. Okay, so this is another way to do the three basket system if you don't want to get, and this is also portable. This is also, doesn't hold as much, but it's also portable. Okay, now we're going to talk about stage three, the filing cabinet. All right, the thing about the filing cabinet, the use of a filing cabinet is, the pros and cons, legal and letter documents can be stored in it by tabbed open hanging files. All right, now let's talk about the usefulness of each of these systems. All right, this three basket system, this three tote or basket system is carryable. You can pull it anywhere. The rolly one is adaptable and movable and it can go with you. The hanging one here, this little one, all right, will go with you anywhere, um, which is really handy because you don't always want to be doing the work. Um, you want to do it when you feel like doing it. You don't want to do it when you have to be in a particular place, okay? Now, um, all of them have their merits, but all of them have their limitations too. All right, this, while it is expandable, if you look at the size of those drawers, they hold all of my, my papers of each, important papers of each uh, type. All right, the rolly one here is also expandable. All right, you can see that you can move it back and forth, you can add more files, you can change the tabs. Um, Filing cabinets, not so much, all right, okay. And it's also updatable, they're updatable. So as you want to, with the binders, for instance, where did that binder go? There it is, okay. Um, with, that, with the binders, all right, this is very portable. This is, get a four inch one if you've got a lot of documents, the things you wanna keep the information. This is like a resource. This isn't sort of a, it is on the go, but this is like infinitely adaptable. This is updatable by open it up, take the bill out, put the next one in. All right. So they're also very um, expandable and they're very adaptable. All right. So um, is there anything else? talked about that. Um, okay, each one of these, the thing that I like in particular about this one is um, triaging, okay, triaging for outdatedness. If the paper is important at all, at all, at all, at all, it isn't automatically an urgent paper or vital, it goes in the third drawer, but the, or if it is important and I've got a deadline way out, it can go in the second drawer. The things that are most important, obviously, like I use has to be done within, now for me, I say three, four days, that's the top drawer. You can set your own timeline according to what the urgency is for you. And 
everything that remains important as I'm working in my box, you know, the lots of what papers that come in and we get lots of papers, believe me, we triage them on the go and they either go in one, two or three or they go in the bin, all right? So what wasn't terribly important could become a little more important. That deadline, that whatever could be coming up. It, it can be updated into the middle bin. And sooner or later, if we don't deal with it in the middle bin, it's going to be in the top bin. But by that time, I've already dealt with the top bin on my own timeline, on your own timeline. You may not have the same need for urgency. All right. It'll sit there safe. You know where to go for it. All right. So the, the value of any portable rolling tiered baskets or hanging files is that they are always easily at hand. Is that something you want and need? And no matter where you are, they can go with you. All right, you can stick them in a cupboard. They don't have to take up floor space. Stick it in the bottom of a cupboard under something that you're hanging, all right? They are, are easy to attach identifiable labels. I put priority one, priority two, priority three on this one, all right? Because, and the other kind of basket as well, is this one, this is very handy. Right now I got this at Staples, but you could probably get one of these, it's wire, all right? So it's sturdy, you hang it on the wall or on the back of a door, all right? And priority one, priority two, priority three. So priority one for us is perhaps to follow up and complete. So it's not something I have to do, it's something that is really important, but HAFS is gonna do it. So I put what the criteria is here. All right, um, financial for input. The bookkeeper and the account, they really like to have the financial papers on time. So that's a two because it doesn't have to happen all the time. What are your criteria for something to be a two? And three is priority three. It's important. I want to, I really seriously want to do it. I'm gonna hang this on a wall, I'm gonna hang it on the back of a door. Um, and as I, as I triage my mail, I decide, all right? All fillers go in the, in the bin. Priority one, according to my criteria, goes automatically in here, here, and here. You can put it on the back of a door. If you get your mail and you receive it, you bring it in by your front door or your back door. If there's a closet uh, right there, open the door hang this thing on the door, you open the door, you've got your mail, you're triaging it, you put it right there and the bin and Bob's your uncle, off you go and enjoy yourself for the rest of the day. Okay, this is also very, very handy. And you can change where you hang it too. And it's sturdy, simple, simple, simple. Okay, now, um, one of the things you might want to think about is what proportion of the key papers as you're going through them from your work box that the picked up the bunch from flat surface floor, put in the work box, what proportion of those that you need to keep, not that you receive, all right? that you absolutely feel you need to keep, absolutely, and evidence has proved you need to keep it. What size um, are they? Are they letter size or legal size? All right, that may, that may um, influence the type um, of system that you keep. The hanging basket here, you can put anything in that. The rolling one here is specifically, this is letter, this way across is letter, this way across is legal. The rolly basket here, bin, there are rolling thing, hanging files, letter, legal, all right? 
this one, I know I'm pitching it. I swear I don't get anything for it, but I'm in love with this basket. Um, I give them as gifts to everybody I have to give a gift to. Um, after you buy the basket, you have no upkeep. You have no costs. It's evident. Top basket priority one, middle basket priority two, according to your criteria, bottom basket, priority three, okay? You don't need any fancy dancy anything uh, for that one, which is what I love. I love simplicity. You know, these ones, I really can't think of anything bad to say about them. Um, they're very, very, I find them really, really helpful for me. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do, if you feel that you've not had success with paper storage retrieval systems in the past, um, is to hang in while we move on to the next uh, section. Okay, just a, high, just a, a small aside, next week we're going to discuss easy peasy, really easy peasy, time management systems, time management approaches um, as the way out of overwhelm. How many people here right now feel overwhelmed? Just thumbs up, hands up. Okay, I think that's almost universal. Okay, so next week is a foundation piece to this, which I want you to consider and chew today, choose a way choose a way, all right, and get started. All right, some of these systems, this one to some extent, to some extent, um, not as much. My love affair with the rolling baskets. Um, you can actually store more than paper, all right? You can have practically anything that is a priority, you can prioritize in this or this. Doesn't just have to be paper. If something else is a priority for you, then you can, you can store it as well, okay? It's about the priority, all right? This is like the power basket system actually for me. All right, now, um, I think we've done that, all right? Oh no, go back just a second, please. Brayden, you're gonna have to uh, edit a bit. Um, I wanna go back just a little bit. I wanna give you um, what I use as criteria as a starting point for you to think about what is priority for you. So whichever system I use, whether it's the, the clear tones, cheap, okay, cheap, portable, um, adaptable, the rolling basket, the hanging basket, the hanging file system. Number one is for anything that has to happen, has to happen on a very, very short schedule. I would say for me, it's within the next two to three, four days at the most. It has to be done. Okay, so you might be thinking about things like bills. You might be thinking about um, confirming appointments. You might be, it has a deadline. It's the thing that when you don't do it, you're gonna go, oh, whoa, gotta do that right now. All right, okay, it's the power basket. The middle basket or the middle system, whichever, all right, it's still important information, and I do need to get those done or addressed, dealt with in some way within a week or two. All right. So it's got a, it is important. It's got a deadline, but it's out there. The downside of it's out there is it makes it much easier to forget. All right, or to let other things. Anybody here have a perfect life where nothing gets lobbed in? All right, I envy you. Um, and that lobbing in that is just part of life has the potential to get in the way and kind of obliterate you remembering that second priority. Okay, basket three 
it's still important enough, all right, to have to get done, but really its deadline is when it makes itself a problem, all right? And then it's going to get triaged into basket two, so you've given yourself a narrower time limit. You may wait for it to make itself a number one, all right? What are your time frames? What are your limits? The great thing about all of these systems is they are really, really easy to what I call triage. You got a few minutes, you can go through basket number two and say, did anything become a one? Nope, okay. Basket number three, haul it out into your lap. Did anything become a number two or a number one? Nope. All right, what do I wanna do instead? Okay. Um, the number two and the number one are always automatically, organically triaging themselves. All right. Okay. So you don't, at night, you're not going to wake up in a sweat thinking, oh, I forgot something. You don't have to worry about it. It'll be in one of the three baskets. Okay. Now let's talk about the age old fire filing system. You know, I disagree with some professional organizers who downplay the importance and the usefulness of filing systems, filing, um, filing cabinets rather. I think they are useful. I think they are very useful. The downside of a filing cabinet though, is that items have to get filed. All right, that's the downside of it. Even if they're filed well in alphabetical order, they still need to be culled every so often. And because a filing cabinet holds so much, it's a big job to go through it, all right? Hence, it is less likely to happen. But let's not kid ourselves. Some of the documents that we are going to come across and decide have to be kept have long time importance for us. Somebody needs, yeah, okay. Now, but they are only usable, useful rather, for long-term, per, pretty permanent storage. What I find most useful about a filing cabinet is that when something is important long-term and they don't need to be at hand like these other systems, they don't need to be portable. They're a resource, all right, in lieu of a binder. Now, if I had to choose, and I have frequently, almost every day, I would choose a binder, okay, over a filing cabinet, all right? Because look at the, the adaptability. You don't lose it. You you use your indelible marker, you mark what the topic is on the binder, and you keep the binder. You don't have to have this system, this calyx system. You could have a bookcase. You could have a flat surface with bookends, all right? You could have just about anything um, where you keep those binders. And then when you're looking for just that thing, that piece of information, it is right there at hand. It's great for sheet music. It's great for recipes. It's great for five, for bills. It's great for just about anything, okay? Love binders, all right? Because I don't, maybe sometimes I don't want to have to go through this tiered system looking for what I'm looking for, all right? It's right there screaming at me, all right? Now, to transition to binders, all right, uh, other papers or other information that I want to continue to use and I want to have at hand easily accessible are what I put in binders. They are resources, they are at hand, I am going to use it frequently. And when I need or want that information, I do not want to be going, have to go someplace. I can take the binder with me, all right? I can sit in comfort. I can have a glass of wine. I can have a cup of tea. I can do just about anything, all right? And I can have my binder at the kitchen table looking at information. Oh, I wanna be sure to say that. 
what would your use be for binders? And remember, you don't have to three-hole punch every paper. Get a few of those cheap, heavy paper double pocket folders, three-hole punch one folder or a few folders, put them in there and stack the information in there. Lots of shortcuts. All right. Um, let me see. Ah, yes. Another way, if you want to use the, uh, where did I get this? Don't you love it? You're going to be um, editing this. Um, <laughs> Ready? Okay. When I converted over to the binder system, I decided, even though I do have a three hole punch, I decided that I would invest in a nice cheap resource, all right? And I would I'd buy them in bulk. Um, so this is the purchased pre three hole punched lined paper, all right? You can get this at the dollar store. So if you wanna write your recipes or you want to, um, Type them out on your computer. I'm pretty sure you could put this paper in your printer and have them print out on it. All right, cheap, cheap resource, really, really useful. All right, now, um, ah, I could not live, truthfully could not live, that is not a dramatic statement without, I love these things. After my rolling three-tiered basket, which I have expressed great adoration for, um, these little clips are so handy because you know when you have, you've gone through paper and you've kind of typed it, I don't mean typed it as in type, 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 I mean as in this is about this topic, this is about this topic, or this is this priority, this is this priority. These little beauties keep them from becoming invisible again. All right? Cheap. Do yourself a favor. Get a few little boxes of them. They're cheap, 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 and they don't have to be colored. But if you have ADD or ADHD, you could get them in two or three colors. And everything that is most important, you could color code and cue. It sounds like it's a lot of work. It actually isn't. It actually isn't when you try it. Okay, now, um, get yourself um, a, a small supply. It doesn't have to be Sharpies, okay? The only thing is, this is gonna last a whole lot longer than something that, I didn't say this, that you order on Amazon, all right? And you end and it's not, it's some sort of indelible marker that will last three hours, all right? Get yourself a few pretty good ones, um, indelible markers. Filing cabinets come in all shapes and sizes. They can be, my favorite is the four drawer, letter size, all right, I don't mind folding the paper, takes less space, all right. I do, however, really look for the ones that have the built-in ridges along that you can hang the files on. I hate the ones where you have to put the, what, I don't even know what they call them, but it's like this frame or something that you put in and they they shift on that. What a pain in the neck that is. Um, so again, filing cabinet, but we also, I can't show you this, well, maybe I can, somewhat easily. Can I get that over there? No, I can't, it's too, it's too, it's too heavy. Um, you can get drawers, all right, that are, the bottom drawer is a filing drawer. Depends on how much you're gonna file. And then you've got, the top two drawers, I've got a great one right here. I've got another one right here in this, you think I live in Ikea. This Ikea bookcase, the bottom of it um, is a filing cabinet as well. All right, can be right under wherever you are. Okay. Um, with filing cabinets or even these drawers, 
they come, some of them come with wheels. Anything that's on wheels is your best friend. All right. Or you can get, um, what would you call it? You can get a base um, and you can put it on wheels so that you can roll it around. All right. The worst thing that's going to happen about that is it's going to take a little more space when you tuck it under a desk. The one important thing, this is a downside, all right? It can be a downside. The one important thing about a filing cabinet is that it absolutely needs to be centrally located. There is no point in having a filing cabinet in the basement um, or somewhere that you have to go to, all right? And so choose wisely, all right? So ask yourself if you really favor the filing cabinet because you used it, whichever device, whichever piece of furniture tool that we've talked about right now, if you're leaning in a particular direction, all right, figure out right now as you look around, where is that my next best friend going to be located? All right, where would I locate that? Now, you know, there is nothing wrong if you have space. There is nothing wrong with having a filing cabinet. You can spray paint it if you really feel artistically inclined. Um, in the kitchen, there, there is no uh, problem having it behind a room divider or some in your bedroom or some other place. That's the one downside with a filing cabinet, okay? Um, all right, so what else did I want to tell you about that? Hmm. Okay. When you're making the files, all right, a new file, the tabs, or you're, you're writing them on with an indelible marker on a binder or, or in your filing cabinet, keep it simple. Keep the title simple. Ask yourself, what is the most important aspect about this thing I want to file? And if I have one or two words to describe the name, all right, so that when you go to find the material, wherever you, in whichever system you've chosen, you're actually looking for the right thing. Okay, because that's the word you would use for it. All right. It's the same thing when you're trying to find a permanent home space in your environment for an item that you want to keep. What do you do? You hold it, you close your eyes, and you ask yourself, if I was looking for you, where would the first place be? That place never comes with three or four or five words in the front hall closet, in the whatever. So when, for instance, I was looking for titles for the binders, ADD and ADHD in letters, not written out, anxiety, procrastination, all right, narcissism, other comorbidities, all right, okay, same thing. In a filing cabinet, just a few cautionary things. Some of the important papers can be historical. The purchase of the environment that you're living in, all right? Um, your rent receipts, if you file for those for taxes. Um, and so if it involves the purchase or sale of a property and that is still important, all right? Put purchase address, you don't need the postal code, just the street name, all right? Sale, street name, all right? Gas bill, gas, hydro. We have more than, my company has more than one car, and so it's VW Touring, um, Honda CRV, all right? Okay, you can keep, can we go back just a bit there? Mm -hmm. You can keep um, 
We've talked about phone bills, we've talked about gas, sorry. All right, Braden can edit. Veterinary, vet records, health records, and the name of the person, the first name of the person. Extended health insurance. This is an interesting one. If you have extended health benefits and you can file for reimbursement, you wanna have a few files, all right? You wanna have the receipt, unclaimed, not yet claimed. You wanna have submitted. You wanna have reimbursed, all right? So that you can track the stages. If you have a copay, uh, you want to have another one, and that would be um, file or whoever you cope you have a copay coverage with. Submit to. In our case, it's Canada Life for me, and it is um, Johnson's for the person that I I share a copay with. Okay. Keep it simple. A simple alphabetic filing system is best because that's the name that you're going to look for. Try not to get too involved and too intricate unless there is a legal reason to do that by household and then it's all um, car and then it's all um, recipes and then it's all. You want it to be alphabetical. All right, when you're just starting out, because it's much easier to find to file and find to retrieve the information, which is the whole purpose for keeping it, right? Okay. All right. Now for binders. Okay. If you use binders, they are a wonderful, wonderful way, well worth a little bit of extra work, all right, um, for keeping ongoing records and chronological history, all right? And they make it so easy for you to have that information portable and at hand, all right? So the great thing about binders um, is it is much, much easier to update the information or resources because as you're filing or storing them, you're seeing the others right there. You can pull out anything that's outdated, uh, anything that needs to be updated. It's right there at hand. All right. Um, when you're keeping historical records, you keep historical records only if they remain still important. All right. Um, so can keep going. Um, yeah, I, I just handed, I just did that one. Okay, now, keep going. Okay, bank account records, bank statements, for instance, complete with the bank name and the account number. All right, if you're going to keep your statements, although I strongly advise you that unless there is a really good reason, consider using online because you can go back 12 to 18 months free of charge. They handle the storage. All right. Account by account. All right. So try not to duplicate. If you uh, want to go back, I don't know. I guess it depends on the um, credit card uh, firm that you deal with. Um, how long they keep your your credit card statements. Maybe, maybe you want um, to print those off and keep them for a little bit of a time in case they, in case you want to track your spending. If you're, I had a young lady um, call me the other day saying, I need desperate help. The, what COVID has done to me is, I can't find the off switch for online buying, for online shopping. Um, I, if I had to go out, I wouldn't have done it. But boy, now I am on, I'm on speed dial, all right? And I can't find the off switch. Well, in that case, if you're trying to solve a problem, 
you could print those off and you could track them over a few months and see. Just make yourself, first of all, aware, and second of all, accountable, and third of all, adapt to what you really want to do. All right? All right. Now, um, let me see. In binders, the information is tactile, if that's important to you. And it is very um, visual as well. It's right there. Um, let me see. Uh, and I really want to stress that all of these symptoms, all of these systems, rather, symptoms, listen to me, uh, it must feel like a symptom at this point with me talking so long. All of these systems, all right, are adaptable to electronic. You can get yourself, where's that handy dandy little four terabyte? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Here's my other best friend. <clears throat> You can copy them on your computer. Never mind printing them off. Never mind having to file them physically. Never mind having to have. I still would have this for the day to day, okay? The day to day stuff. Let's get yourself a pretty good quality, not terribly expensive, external hard drive, or use the system on your computer and file them. Even if you have a to be filed uh, folder, put them in there. And when you have the time and the focus, go in and move them to their folder, all right? This is all adaptable to online electronic as well. And it keeps it at hand. Electronic is as at hand as the, um, as the binders. Although you may, unless you have a laptop that you're sa saving it to, if it's a, if it's a computer, um, a desk computer, uh, you're probably going to want your hard drive plugged into a laptop if you want it to be portable, okay? All right, all right, let's see if there's anything else that we want to talk about here now. All right, keep going. Ah, um, you know, the folder we were talking about, about passwords and that kind of thing, um, really handy for your Wi-Fi name and password, your house alarm, family birthdays, but you can do that on a Google calendar as well. You can actually give yourself a bring forward so that a week before somebody's birthday, you give yourself a reminder and it pops up and now you've got time to send them an electronic card or go out and get them a card. All right, all right. Um, let me see, we can keep going. Um, we're going to talk about next week, we're gonna talk about time management, um, easy peasy, um, and a variety of ways to manage time and have a, um, an easy at hand reference, all right, to keep you on track. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint, all right. You don't have to have a whiteboard, all right. You can have one piece of three hole punched paper turned sideways and you can make your own portable ongoing calendar. All right, we're gonna talk about other types of calendars as well. For instance, the hard copy calendar. We're gonna talk about electronic calendars on your smartphone and how to use them, all right? We want it to be easy. We want you to be able to do it and only have to think of it once. And we want it to be at hand when you need it to reduce the stress and the chaos and open up the space and free it up. And we want it to be simple. All right, so I will see you next week and we're gonna do foundation piece, time management. All right, see you then. Take care. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Yes, you can.